It is not easy to impress me. I go to companies every week. I am impressed by Superb. ISO isn't just this stupid piece of paper in a standard. It's the spirit behind it. This company embodies the spirit of ISO better than I've seen in almost any company out there. The spirit of ISO is working with your, your workforce so that it's not management versus labor. It's a cooperative endeavor with everyone that's mutual respect and mutual knowledge. This company embodies that better than I've seen virtually anywhere. I'm impressed by it. The one thing that I, I like to focus on in the comments that I have um, for the next couple of minutes is what she highlighted. And my comments tonight are going to be entitled Defending the Spirit of Superb. And I'll give you three words that will answer the question of how and why as a takeaway. Notice, and I thought it was very significant, that her comments and what she was impressed with was not the new plaza that we had built, although I'm sure she liked that. It wasn't even our technology, although I, you know, that is important. What she found to be very different about Superb Industries was the people, the team, the honesty, the positive attitude, the spirit, as she described it, and how you embody what ISO should be, and in most cases is not. So that gave me pause to ponder because one of the things that I am personally very concerned about and am very jealous in a good way about, and that is that we maintain the culture that is that embodies what she saw. Hence, my comments are entitled Defending the Spirit of Superb. I'm going to ask all of us, I'm going to challenge all of you to become a committee of one because uh, leadership, I believe, as Maxwell defined it, is, is influence, nothing more, nothing less. We all are leaders. We are all influential. It is only a question of what type of influence we are to the other team members that we have around us. So as our company grows, we need to all become a committee of one to defend the spirit that that auditor recognized when she audited us, audited us a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to suggest three things. The first one is to be, to be superb. We cannot jump over our shadow. We can maybe pretend to be something we're not, but ultimately we are what we are. We are who we are. So I would ask all of us to think about the fact and to become, to be superb. Not something we put on, but that we begin to integrate it into our lives, an attitude of mind that is decisively for the concept of being the best that we can be. Everybody in Superb Industries can be superb. It doesn't matter if I'm Mary Ruth, who uh, we are all very thankful that cleans the floor, or if I'm building a big tool, or if I'm engineering something, we can all be superb in our own way. But I'd like to take it a little bit deeper than that, because we're talking about what we are, who we are. We had the unfortunate circumstance about a year ago, or two years ago now, when we had 12 immediate family members of our small group pass in one year. And I was heartened by the fact that the team stood behind those individuals and gave comfort and encouragement. That's what we should be. That's part of being superb. That's part of being what many other companies are not. That's being what I envision the group to be. So if we take to, to heart being superb, what the next thing is to do, to take action, to defend. Okay, now I'm going to take this in a little bit different direction. And what I mean by that is, when you see someone, someone is one of your colleagues, you know, we all have bad days, you have bad hair days. We're, we're human beings, we're superb, we're not perfect. 
we all need to be a committee of one to reach out to individuals and tell them, you know what, this is not superb. This is not the way that we um, ultimately behave. And I would say that in most cases, the individuals say, you know what, you're right. We need to go to each other and solve, in, uh, solve problems on an individual basis because that's the most effective and the best way to do it. And you know what? It is so counterintuitive. It's so much more fun and so much more human to go over to the water cooler and say, did you hear? I can't believe he did that. Do you know what she's doing in the office? Have you heard? That's the kind of thing that destroys organizations. I have always believed that the biggest opportunity for cost reduction is the cost of corporate politics. I finally found some research to validate that hunch that I had, and I shared it in my comments earlier uh, on October the 4th uh, when we had an all-employee meeting. It is estimated that in the average Fortune 500 company, the cost of corporate politics, you know, the kind of underhanded bickering and fighting and politicking that goes on at all levels of the organization costs somewhere between 6 and 22% of sales. That's why we're competitive, folks. If we start down that road, we will not be able to compete because we, we run on a 5% margin. So if we start politicking, we're, we're going to be uh, in, the, in, the, in the red real quick. So when I'm talking about doing, Let's defend the spirit that the auditor recognized that you have my, I, I've got your back covered. Because I will tell you that I will personally get more passionately involved in those kinds of issues than any other thing. I mean, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to break tools. Well, you know, the saying, we make them in the tool room. They break them. We're going to have those kinds of things happen, and yes, it can be costly, but it is not anywhere nearly as expensive. Figure out what 10% of $12 million is, and you can do the math. It's a lot of money that we cannot afford to lose over petty arguments. And finally, the final thing is benefit. Uh, be superb, do, and then benefit. We have all been the beneficiaries of having the economic crisis be a non-event. Yes, the first quarter of 2009 at Superb was difficult. And we, we banded together, we did a survey, we, we had a, an opportunity to give input and decide how we're going to tighten our belts because the, the first quarter was tough. And then we made a pact with our salesmen that we are not going to participate in the economic downturn and things uh, turn around. 2009, when everybody else was down, we were up 25%. And we benefit. And I always say this, be superb, do your best, be your best, because then you can go home and feel good. You know, and, and if for some reason superb industries cannot fully recognize your potential, and sometimes that happens. You know, sometimes you know there just isn't enough space. Um, somebody else will. You see, ultimately you will benefit, and that's the most important part, is that you will benefit from having know, knowing that you've done the best you could in being superb. And with respect to benefiting. Um, as Jeff reminded me, I'm getting older. I, I made the big 5-0 this year. And uh, it used to be 50 years old was really old time. But that said, I'm, I'm very, with, with the completion of the building and with the things that we have done, we've kind of arrived in a way. Because back in 1986, what, what he did not say is a couple of young guys with more ambition than sense started a company named Superb Design and Manufacturing in a two-car garage with a couple of Beto old grinders that would make Lee and Andy and um, Ed, uh, they, they, they would not grind was the thing that we uh, started out with. We had more ambition than sense, but there was a spirit, there was an idea of doing the best 
we could was what we had where we are, and it has served us well over time. My passion from this point forward is going to be very simple, and it is to make Superb Industries the best possible organization that we can be for the benefit of all the stakeholders. And that, of course, is first of all the customer because without a customer, we have no business. And second of all, the employees, and finally, the stockholders. We're not in the business of benefiting Wall Street. We're in the business of being superb, of growing and being better and competing globally. So that's my commitment to you. And again, I call on all of you to be a committee of one to defend the spirit of superb.